So first let's define what makes these difficult and then why are they at high risk for non-union? Let's talk about different treatment scenarios. So the old Jones fracture is a metadiaphyseal fracture. This is at the junction where four and five sort of meet. And it's not uh, like my residents always come in. Well, we had a pseudo Jones. We had a pseudo, no, no, no. Those are zone ones. Those may be proximal zone twos. Those are different. So when you look, basically, this is a Jones fracture right there. This is a diaphyseal stress fracture right here. Different in location, but I'm going to make the argument we treat them the same. The problem that you get into is this is where the blood supply is poor. And I think our classification systems are very difficult to understand. They talk about zone two and zone twos need to be treated operatively. I disagree 100% because if you talk about a proximal zone two right here, that's good blood supply. I do not treat those operatively. But you get into where that box is, that's poor blood supply. And I'm going to make an argument that we should be offering pretty much most patient surgery there. So I may be going against the grain today. There's your blood supply map. And that's why I think, again, difference between proximal and distal. So what makes these difficult? It's strictly non-union. And, and I'm going to make, again, the argument that non-union can be dealt with proactively by offering surgery. We've been taught to offer non-operative treatment except in high-level athletes. But again, throughout my talk, you're gonna hear some arguments. So Yates, high rate of non-union, non-operative, viable option, less active people. Okay, I agree with that. 